Hello and welcome to the course on fundamental concepts of electricity. In this soft skill session, we'll be attempting a practice problem pertaining to a magnetostatics case. So here we'll be doing a FEM based simulation of a solenoid. For this, we'll be using a free wire called as FEMM 4.2, which is freely available online. So this package actually it solves partial differential equations pertaining to a 2D structure as well as some symmetric 3D structures. The solenoid which we consider here is actually wire wound in the cylindrical fashion. So this cylinder is just to make you visualize this solenoid. In FEMM actually we will be solving only 2D structures and some symmetric 3D structures. So for doing that what we do actually we take a section of this solenoid from its center which is as shown here and then we utilize the actual symmetry of this structure right so what i mean is actually we'll be simulating or we'll be patching only this part of the circuit and using symmetry one can always obtain the complete solenoid the solution for complete solenoid right so the problem definition for this will be axis symmetry which will evidently will become clear the moment i switch to the package so the conventions or the uh, current directions are as shown so the section which will be patching in the canvas of femm will be considering this area which is as shown here and we'll be specifying the conductors here as copper with some specific size or specific dimension which pertains to 18 EWG. Here it's just a unit to show the size which is American wire gauge. You can just check online materials on that. And then we'll consider a current, the total current in this cross section as one ampere which is coming out of the plane and number of turns of this coil will be 100, 100 turns. So and the dimensions here are exaggerated to make you visualize or visualize some aspects of this uh, structure. So here the thickness the or the radial depth is 1 centimeter and then the internal cylinder is having a radii of 1 centimeter Fine. and then the height of this cylinder is 8 centimeter and then the material of this uh, section is actually copper and then the center material is air fine so these are the things so here we'll be using this axis symmetry so we'll be patching only this area with appropriate dimensions so let's see the steps which we need to follow up for the analysis of this structure so first we need to do the problem definition or specify the problem definition so here as discussed will be unit will be considering the unit as centimeter and the problem will be axis symmetry since we are utilizing the actual symmetry of the 3d object and then the since you are doing this axis symmetry actually the depth mode will be off so actually this you can uh, just check the electrostatic version of this very same tutorial so here we need not specify the depth because we are specifying the axis symmetry right? so let's quickly go and check what how to make the layout so let me just switch to the dimensions so we need to use this like one centimeter and one centimeter and eight centimeter here fine so what we'll do is we'll consider this center very center of the cylinder as origin 0 comma 0 fine and then this distance here this point here will become since it is at one centimeter in the x direction so it is one comma zero Right. and then this point here let me just switch the color so this point here is again one centimeter apart from this point so it becomes two comma zero and so on and then this vertical above here since this complete length is eight centimeter so this will become actually this distance will become four centimeter from this so it is actually one comma four and then this point it is 2 comma 4 fine so let's quickly do that and say and the same aspect the same dimensioning for the lower half as well fine so let me just switch to the fem package so if you type femm once you have installed 
So this is the GUI what you can see and if I click on new since the problem is magnetostatics problem so we use magnetics and we'll say okay. So you can see a canvas with the grid like some dot appearing in this canvas. So to to prepare the layout actually as discussed we'll be entering the nodes and then connecting it fine and before that we need to set the problem definition so let me just switch to package and then select problem and then we'll set it to axis symmetry and units to centimeter and frequency we'll be using a dc current or dc injection to the system so we are considering it as zero hertz and rest all we won't uh, touch for time being and we'll say okay so the settings or the problem is defined now we need to make the layout for this axis symmetry so what we do is we'll start with entering the node so select this node button and if you see in the left bottom corner you can see as and when i move my mouse you can see the coordinates changing but it's not easy to enter the node looking at this reference so what we do actually we'll be entering what is the coordinates one by one by pressing tab and then saying zero comma zero so yeah so before that like let me just explain you one more thing here so actually since we have chosen the problem as axis symmetry it's asking about r coordinate and z coordinate fine so for timing you can always consider this as x and y coordinates itself so let me just switch here so actually in the cylindrical coordinate it it's something like this so when you specify this so the radii from this origin 0 comma 0 it's 0 and the height is also 0 but for this point you will have a radii of 1 centimeter and height of 0 centimeter so you can specify 1 and 0 so in a way in the previous planar structure we used to specify x and y which were cartesian format and in the axis symmetry as in in this system we are specifying r and z or z direction or z point fine so which is equivalent right now fine so let me come back so and let me enter the r coordinate as 0 and z coordinate as 0 and say enter so when you do that if i just zoom out so you can see this is the 0 comma 0 point which is radius 0 and height is 0 and now let's quickly build it so we have our origin and let me just show you the problem again here so now we need to enter this only right hand side of section so now i'll enter 1 comma 0 which is this point then 4 1 comma 4 which is above point and then 2 comma 4 then 2 comma 0 then 1 comma minus 4 which is at the bottom and then 2 comma minus 4 here yeah. so this is the section of the uh, solenoid right so as done in the uh, electrostatics problem here as well we need to specify the boundary wherein the since this is not the only thing in the universe so we'll be creating a boundary or uh, let's say a uh, semicircular boundary here yeah. And then we'll specify some boundary conditions here. And again, just as a thumb rule, so the distance of this boundary will be at least three to six times of the maximum distance or maximum dimensions we, we use it here. So let me just come back here and let me just show you what I mean. So we'll enter a point here at 0, 60 here. So let me just show you that. In fact, is this point, and then at the bottom, we'll put minus or zero comma minus sixty, which is here. Fine. So having done this, if I just fit page, so it looks like this. So it may not be really visible, but here we have two points for the boundary, and we'll connect it with a semicircular arc. Fine. So let's do that. So we'll con we'll click on this semicircle arc, and let me just show you one thing. So actually. You need to select the order in which you select the nodes it defines this arc like whether it will be in this side or in this side so let me just show you if i come from top to the bottom and then arc angle is actually we want a semicircle so we'll put 180 degree and we'll say okay 
okay but this is this is not what we wanted so actually we 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 had to go from bottom to top so actually let me just show you from here to here arc angle as 180 and say okay so this is the part and we will remove this part because it's not really required for us so we'll just delete it fine so now let's fit the page so you can see this fine just to complete the boundary we'll use this node here select here and then this and since it's in the zero axis if i zoom in you will see this line will pass through the origin right and similarly we'll connect this structure as well so one by one so we'll select a node and then the another node yeah yeah so having done this we'll just save this file so we'll just save it as let's say a solenoid solenoid case now what we have done is we have actually patched this structure with the boundary now we need to assign materials boundaries and circuit to this fine so let's go to properties and here you can choose material and define explicitly or one can use this material library as well so let me just show you so we'll require an a space or material as air so we'll select that and then we'll require copper with 18 awg you can check the specification later and then that's it so for our case this to suffice so let's say okay and when i go to materials you can access the properties of this fine so let me just show you we go to properties material select air and say modify property so we'll see all this specification needs to be done so later on if you required like non linear bh curve can also be passed for let's say if you have an rn core or something like that but for timing let's set with this and let me just show you for the copper how it looks so these are the relation to copper and this 18 awg it refers to this diameter standard diameter okay so the material property is defined now let's quickly define the boundary condition so here we'll choose the boundary condition type as prescribed a which is actually which is actually zero uh, it's actually the vector potential which we specify as zero so let me just write a character or a text as a equal to zero here you can use any standard or any name but just to indicate i am using a equal to zero it's not an equation here it's just a string value to this boundary so i'll say okay so now you'll see this boundary condition is available to us and similarly we'll define a circuit so we require to pass one ampere current so we'll be using one one as a name for that conductor and we'll select series since we want only one current because at the end later on we'll make it as 100 turn coil and all the actually all the coils are connected in series fine so that's what we mean and we'll say okay one ampere in case if you switch to parallel what happens is each turn will carry one ampere fine so that's the idea so we'll select to series and say one ampere and say okay so this circuit is now defined so let's let's save it again and now let's assign the property one by one so i'll just check this material assigner node which is represented as in green color and i'll click it here and one over here since it is the space air fine now i'll just right click near the node whichever node you want to select and then i will hit space bar and since it's an air type we'll just specify the material as air and then we'll say okay and for this since it's a copper coil so we'll just say select this space bar and then you can specify this as 18 awg copper right and then since it also contains a circuit it's actually a part of a circuit so we need to specify what current we want to pass so we have already created that current so we'll say okay one ampere so note this one is actually pertains to the name of that current what we have created which is one ampere so let me just show you that first right so actually we are referring to this so it can be any name in fact fine right? we are just writing is one so that we can just read out yeah so having defined it so if i just zoom in you will see 18 awg and one colon one is written so let me just show you what it means so it says one number of turn fine but it's not what we wanted we wanted 100 turns and we'll say okay so by default when you say one like the circuit current as one 
like a string one and it's having 110 so what it means is in this area the current is coming outwards right so as indicated in this figure so the current is coming outwards here outwards here fine in case if you want to define this area as with current in incoming so what you can do is you can specify current as minus one or you can specify the number of turns as minus 100 fine so that's the thing and now let's define the boundary conditions so we'll just zoom out fine. we'll just zoom out and then we'll select this segment and we'll just right click near this and hit spacebar and then we'll set the boundary conditions and similar for here to select that actually we need to be on the curved section and then you can select that and then specify the boundary condition that's it so we'll just save it again so this is the structure we'll be analyzing right. we have actually assigned the materials here right. boundary and then the circuit boundary and the circuit is specified so now let's go with the solution so i'll just click on this crank button and it will show you this machine and then if I say solve, it will solve and at the end you can visualize. Fine. So this is the output of this FEM simulation. So let me just show you some more aspects. So I can click on density plot. So this is how the density plot looks. And if you pay attention here, it specifies the problem definition which we have chosen, like centimeter and axis symmetry problem. So this is the solution what we obtain and when we zoom in we get this response So like what we have done in the electrostatic case again one can plot what is the variance of the field intensity over this distance starting from let me just remove it and starting from this origin actual origin to this strength and when I do that plotting, I'll just say magnitude of flux plot. So it looks something like this. Fine. Or if we just see what is the field intensity over this turns of coil, and we can just select this node and this node, and then we'll just say plot. So this is how the field intensity reduces with the distance. Fine, it is higher. In the internal and the lower at this and now if you want to measure let's say inductance or some attributes or the flux linkages of this coil we can always click here in this property circuit property and the circuit or the conductors what we have specified we can choose that and here you will see the flux linkage is shown to have with this it is 76 micro henry fine so flux per current or flux linkage so this Weber's or Henry's both are equal values here. So here this indicates the DC resistance here. Since we have defined to begin with as zero hertz kind of excitation to this, like one ampere, which is DC. Fine. So so this kind of analysis we can do to get this response. And if you want to get the flux lines, we can always get that. So these are the flux lines shown. So let me just fit the bit fine so just keep just remember the this is only the one section of the solenoid but since we have chosen the problem as axis symmetry so it also consider those effect within the simulation fine